likened to the greatest. That is a sound that I'm sure Pavarotti made when he was a young man. Out of Mangere and onto the world stage. Welcome back. In the world of opera, a true tenor voice is rare and highly prized. It's the voice that gives you goosebumps. Think Pavarotti and Domingo. But two tenors from one family? Now that really is an amazing genetic happenstance, not to mention they're from Mangere in South Auckland. This is a story of the Pazzi brothers, Pene, 24, and Amitai, 23. Big boys with big voices. They grew up never realising their extraordinary talent and just how far it could take them. This from Janet McIntyre. People say, oh, you should have a career in singing. I'm like, what? I don't get it. Why would you have a career in singing? Everyone can sing. And we never saw it as a talent. Raised in South Auckland, heading for the world stage. If this is what they're singing like now, they're destined for big things. It was school choir master Terence Maskell who spotted the talent that brothers Pene and Amatai Pati never knew they had. Their music came to them very naturally, very easily. And I guess at times they wondered why everyone else in the world couldn't do it. When someone couldn't harmonise, we're like, well, what's wrong with you? Like, why can't, why can't why you can't do it? Harmonising is really hard. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Give me an idea how easy it is for you. Oh, OK. Have you got a song? Amazing Grace? Yep. Is that too hard? That's no, no, fine. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> Grace, how sweet the sound. Switch. Let's like me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In their first professional public performance in Cambridge, a fundraiser to further their studies, no one was more impressed than opera legend Dame Malvina Major. to find two such amazing tenors in one family and it all comes from their heart. But I just saw in Pene tonight, I think that he's a young Pavarotti. That is a sound that I'm sure and I know Pavarotti made when he was a young man. up in Mangari, loving brothers 20 months apart, and older sisters Torres and Evangeline. Their parents brought them here from Samoa for a better life. My dad is from, uh, bless him, he's from a very, very poor family in Samoa, and he's struggled all his life to kind of like bring us here to New Zealand. And same as my mum, they're from very, like, very poor families. Pene and Amatai went without luxuries. Couldn't afford a ball. Yeah. And Sometimes just, even the basics. The simple things like stuff like you didn't have lunch kind of stuff. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would just go to school and get full on the tap water. That's what they <laughs> used to say. Just say, really? just, just drink water and you'll you're always feel full. Even though we're both working, um, we always have to um, fulfill our obligations with the family back home in the island. So we have to send money and... Juliet and Penne Senior, who trained to become registered nurses here, admit they made sacrifices. The kids were the last people to have anything, 
you know, when they ask for money for school or we always say, um, we had to give money to the family first before we um, do something for you guys. But what Penne and the other kids did have was music. All of them blessed. I was four when I started singing. He obviously was two, so he was being carried around. That's Penne on the left, next to Amatai, taking part in a weekly ritual. The Montreal, Montreal family. family. <laughs> Entertaining the patients where their parents worked. If we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have um, been singing today. And I'm yeah. very, very sure of it. It was that, it was church. We're singing from a young, young age. And then as students of Aurere College in Papatoetoe, a school where music is the lifeblood. Was there one defining moment when someone recognised in you something quite magical? It's probably, I think it was Terence. I think it was Terence as well. <laughs> Terence Maskell, master of some of the most successful school choirs in the country. He's been immersed in Polynesian voices for almost 40 years. But two voices have risen above most others. Oh, I see now this is what? When did they change this? Oh, I don't say. <laughs> These two are something out of the box. They have a natural God-given talent and it is just wonderful to see it flourishing it's right now. It's good to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Over ten years at school and in private lessons, he nurtured, sometimes prodded his protégés. So they could be distracted at times? Oh, yes. <laughs> they would try to pull the wool, like when they hadn't done any work. It didn't wash. <laughs> How do you mean pull the wool? Well, you know, um, look, I'm finding this bit tricky. Rubbish. He hadn't even looked at it. <laughs> you know, I would say, and this is a generalisation, but probably true, for most of, of their lives, these guys have had it easy. It's come naturally to them. There has not been the need to do much work. But now, they are. As now, when I look back at it, I'm actually very, very thankful I did it. I'm very thankful for the growlings and for, all, for <laughs> oh, being thanks. pushed, <laughs> for being pushed to do it, because he, he actually saw the potential, you know, and he's like, you know, don't give in now. I'm just going to keep kicking you until you get it right. It's no one never come holy time. Kiss me, my darling. Be mine tonight. Tomorrow will be too late. It's now or never. I want to be successful. I want to show the world that you're from a very poor family, very poor family in Samoa, that even us, even we can make it to the top. Penne is on his way. He's bagged the most prestigious singing prize in Australia, and this year, by invitation, he's been studying at the Elite Academy of Voice in Wales.
He's been hanging out in his spare time with Dame Kitty to Kanawa. She's a motherly figure for me in, in the UK. I stayed with her for a week. When it comes down to professionalism, she has it sorted. This is what you have to do. You have to be here at a time. There's no mucking around like this. It's very firm, very strict. And that's what you need in professionalism. But when it comes to just staying around in her house, just you kind of forget that you're with this renowned legend, you know? You kind of, you're, you're sitting there going, I'm sitting having breakfast with Kiri. This is weird. She's been such an amazing mentor, an amazing, and she will continue to be. Hi, Christine. Yeah, hi. How are you going, Amitai? Uh, very well, thank you. You're, you're a big star at the moment, aren't you? Oh, I'd like to think so. <laughs> big star. Oh my God, my God. Success too for Amitai. I just want to let you know that you, you're one of the six finalists for the year. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm A here. finalist in New Zealand's premier song quest, the Lexus, in two weeks' time. Very, very important uh, because um, I'm looking just to improve and get better. And hopefully with this competition, uh, I can do that. I guess I do have to watch my tail because he possesses the same trait and the same voice, the same, um, if not anything, a bit of musicality, you know, and so... And he's, he's worked so hard at it, and it's like, he's just got to be more disciplined. Good food, good singing, can't go wrong, you know? Penne's home from Wales on holiday. <laughs> you all fish? Yeah, you try to explain that to the Welsh there. <laughs> and when he returns, he'll be taking his little brother with him. <laughs> <laughs> Amatai, too, has been invited to the academy. It makes me really happy, you know, to think that um, my kids come that far. You know, to tennis is difficult to find anywhere. Let's see. So where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> she she never want to mention me. <laughs> it's safe to say the party boys won't forget where they've come from. I love you, Mum. <laughs> How far do you want to go with this? To the very top. My ultimate goal that I set as a little kid was to one day stand on a stage and that everybody in the auditorium has paid to come listen to me sing. Being able to sing and recital kind of next to this guy, look out from the stage and kind of just say, you know, well, I've, I'm here now, and yeah, we, we did it. it. From nothing to something. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Yeah. them. Best of luck, guys. Penny and Amitai recently formed a band with their friend, baritone Moses Mackay. They're called Sola Mio. Now, do send us your feedback on our Facebook page, Sunday TVNZ. Meanwhile, we'll leave you with one last song from Aorere College. Thanks for joining us. Nga mihi nui. Hei kona. Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew when I bit off more than I could chew, more than he could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spat it out. He did it. He did it. He did it. I faced it. Took the blows I 